my interest in 3D printing, how did it start? In about the year 2000, the university where I was working got a very big grant for equipment and I bought some 3D printers with it. And so uh, suddenly I found a complete liberation to me as an engineer because I could design things on my computer and have them in my hand hours later. It was wonderful. And uh, that, that was my initial discovery of 3D printing. The links to my scientific career date back to when I was a child. Um, I've been interested ever since then in making a machine that could copy itself, a self-replicating machine. And when I acquired 3D printers for the first time about 15 years ago, suddenly I realized we had a technology that was so powerful at manufacturing that it stood a chance of being able to copy itself. And I realized that I could set up a project to do exactly that, to make a 3D printer that printed itself. So that was where the link came in. The reason that I made the RepRap 3D printer open source was not actually because I think that open source is a good thing. I do think that open source is a good thing, but that was irrelevant to the decision. Remember that I'm trying to make a machine that copies itself. And so if I closed it, it wouldn't copy itself so successfully as if I opened it, because then more people would be able to copy it. And so I made it open source for the same reason that, for example, a plant doesn't charge insects for its pollen. It pays insects to take the pollen away. I didn't pay people to take the rat rat machine away, but nonetheless I made it free so that anybody could make one because I thought that would be the most successful way to have people copy it and make it copy itself. Yes, we've had lots of feedback from users. Um, uh, one or two of them uh, have difficulties with it, and of course our support team does, our best, does their best to sort those out. Um, lots of people have expressed enthusiasm for it because they like, the, like it and the way it works. Um, but most importantly, we've had feedback of actual improvements in the design, both of the machine and the software that runs the machine. Because it's open source, anybody can access all the designs for the machine and all the software that drives it. And lots of people have come back to us with suggestions for even better ways that we can do it. And so we've incorporated some of those in the new release of the machine. The idea of an open source 3D printer has paid off for me because it's making me a living, uh, so that's good. But when you say pay off for me, perhaps we ought to consider pay off for the world. Um, lots of people have made RepRap 3D printers. We don't actually know how many because it's open and anyone can download the designs of the machine. Lots of people have made machines that we've never heard of. We think there must be between 50 and 100,000 of these machines in the world. And so in terms of payoff, that's really going quite well. The next things we're going to be doing is to make a multi-material version of the Ormerod, so it can print, well, it can print in several colors. Uh, that's quite interesting. But even more interesting is being able to print in materials with different physical properties. So you can print an object which consists of a rigid material and elsewhere it has a flexible rubber-like material. So you can make things with hinges and so on and so forth. Um, we're also looking at printing electrical conductors. So then we'll be able to print three-dimensional electrical circuitry. And that will be extremely useful for people, I think, because they can design their electronics in with the mechanical parts they design as opposed to needing separate printed circuits for it. Those are a couple of the things that we're working on right now. Well, the latest innovations in 3D printing are actually uh, the collapse of something. Um, a lot of these technologies were patented about 20 years ago, and so almost all the patents are running out at the same time. And that's having a very interesting effect on the industry because it means that anyone can now enter the industry uh, without infringing the patents because virtually every way of doing this trick was patented at th that time and now lots of people can set up companies based on it. So it's a very exciting time. So it's actually the removal of something that is the most interesting thing that's come in. The future trends in 3D printing I think are machines that will work with lots of different materials. Um, at the moment, we're constrained largely to plastics, though there are machines that will work with ceramics uh, and with rubbers and other materials like that. But once we've got machines which will work with five or six radically different materials, radically different from their physical properties, the number of things we'll be able to print will grow enormously and we'll be able to print whole machines as opposed to printing parts for machines. And I think that that will be the next big thing. I think the 3D market will develop 
extremely rapidly. It is developing extremely rapidly. The growth in 3D printers has been exponential. Um, and we have now see machines, including of course the RepRap machine, that are affordable by private individuals. Now, companies like Samsung didn't get rich by selling mobile phones to companies. They got rich by selling mobile phones to people. There are more people than companies. And so once you start selling 3D printers to people, then the market expands enormously. Seven billion of us. Well, additive, man additive manufacturing is what 3D printing is. Uh, so we're, we're there. We've got additive manufacturing now. Um, it's just a question, just. It's a question of improving it. Uh, improving it is sometimes difficult because it involves the surmounting of technical obstacles, of course. But um, we've already got additive manufacturing. That's what 3D printing is. Um, now we're just making it better and better. Actually, I didn't say that 3D printing was the threat to capitalism. It was The Guardian that said that, London newspaper. Um, it may be, though. Uh, I don't disagree with them. Um, if everybody can make the stuff they need for themselves, we don't have nearly such a need for the infrastructure of manufacturing. Uh, at the moment, the way goods get made are that um, uh, they're made in a central factory and then they're put on trucks and driven to shops and people go into shops and buy them, or possibly they buy them online. When people can make large numbers of goods that they want for themselves, it makes the manufacture of goods very similar to running a small holding or a farm. You can grow your own vegetables, you don't need to go to a shop to buy those vegetables. If you can make your own toothbrush or your own cat flap or your own mobile phone ultimately, why buy those things from somebody else? I think that 3D printing will change the world in the way that the personal computer and the mobile phone did. I could be wrong of course, none of us knows the future. But this ability that the machines give to make an enormous range of things really very easily and furthermore the ability that it gives to private individuals and, and very small companies to do that suddenly democratizes manufacturing in a way that has never happened before in history. Um, and that is a potentially world-changing thing.